Hi, I'm G. Welcome back to my art channel. When I hit 15,000 subscribers a while back, I asked you guys on the community tab what you would like me to do as a special video to mark this event. The overwhelming response was to do a video all about my favorite art materials. So I chose the top five for you, which are kind of in a bit of a random order, but here you go. So the first thing that I could think about was alcohol markers. Now I first got a set of alcohol markers in 2012, so I'm a bit of a late starter with these. I love them because of the way you could layer the colors on top of each other in a way that you never could with felt tip pens because you're always used to like, you know, end up rubbing the paper if you use felt tip pens on top of each other too much. So I started out with pro markers and I just added to those over the years, got more and more pro markers. And then they came out with flex markers, which had that kind of brush tip. Now most alcohol markers are a dual tip, which means they've got a very, very fine tip on one end and then they've got a chisel tip or a bullet tip or a thicker tip on the other end. Now I love the brush tip and that just changed the game for me. So when I'm talking about alcohol markers here, I don't just mean alcohol markers, I mean brush tip alcohol markers. You can get feathered flicked strokes with the brush tips which is absolutely brilliant and can you know revolutionize the way that you're trying to blend your colors on the paper. Then I sort of pushed the boat out a little bit and I ended up getting grey copics in 2017. They've got a terrific brush tip on them as well, which works absolutely brilliant in exactly the same way as the brush tips on pretty much any other alcohol markers do. But the big thing about the Copics was that they were refillable. So I don't feel as though I'm throwing plastic markers away all the time. So that, that makes a bit of a difference to me in the way that I think about, obviously, disposable markers. The only issue I've got with the Copics is that sometimes the ink looks a bit speckled uh, on the paper that you're using, whereas I never seem to get that effect with the Pro Marker ink. So I actually prefer the ink that goes in the Pro Marker. So for me, if you could perhaps have a refillable Copic type marker, but with the kind of ink that goes in the Pro Markers, that would absolutely be brilliant. But alcohol brush markers are one of my favorite top, top art supplies. Now, next up is the Pentel Pocket Brush Brush Pen, which is an ink brush pen that I first heard about in about 2010, 2011, picked one up, and it completely revolutionized the way that I would ink anything now this is an ink pen with a synthetic brush tip to it, which is nice and springy. And you put a cartridge in the back of it, a bit like a fountain pen, and it feeds the ink all the way through to the brush tip. And then you can actually do your inking using that. So instead of using a fine liner pen and getting lots and lots of very, very thin marks, you can now get a variety of different lines and different um, thicknesses and line weights uh, by pressing down a little bit heavier or pressing up lighter on it. It feels really good when you're using it to lay down those ink lines and it actually kind of feels like you're channeling some of those older comic book artists from like the 60s and the 70s that used to have to use ink pens to do all of their lines. Um, so it, it gives you a feel like, I'm sure I've said that before in one of my other videos, but it really does make you feel like you, you're sort of channeling a bit of Jack Kirby. I'm a massive fan of it and I've used it to just do um, a piece of work exclusively with the brush pen with no other kind of ink and no other color or paint or anything. I love using it to just do an entire picture with and some of my favorite pieces of work like some of the pictures I did, um, fantasy pieces for the Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman but also some of the flowers you see me doing and sharing on the channel as well done exclusively with a brush pen and I really do love the look that you can get from it. Now the next one is a watercolor marker uh, and the first watercolor markers I ever got were the Letraset Aqua markers back in about 2012, 2013. They'd actually seen a picture I'd done, sent me some markers and said, would you try them out? And over the years, I've tried out a few different watercolor markers. Now most of the time they seem to have a dual tip again. So you get a fine tip and then perhaps you get a thicker tip. The Aqua markers had a bullet tip, but the ones that I really enjoyed using and loved the most are the um, Winsor Newton watercolor markers because they have a brush tip as well as the fine tip with them, which again, just revolutionizes the game here. You should have noticed by now that I like things that have perhaps got a brush tip uh, and that seems to be a sort of running theme and, and turning up quite a bit. So I did a Belvine painting with these and then they asked me if I would do some more and they sent me a whole bunch more markers to have a bit of a play with. They contain a water-based pigment ink, not a dye-based ink, which I think is supposed to change how light fast they are. And this applies for both the aqua markers and the Winsor Newton watercolor markers. They are very bright and they are very reactive on the right papers. I'm constantly having to answer questions in my comments about what paper do you use for these? And I do use the Bockingford St. Cuthbert's Mill 300 GSM for these. And I just found it is the best paper for using with them. It stains the least and it reacts the most. 
I love the close control that you can get from these, especially with the Winsor & Newton one with that brush tip. You can really get in some really, really small areas and just lay a little bit of color down because it's so reactive. You only have to add a little bit of water then and it just starts flooding all over the place. It's beautiful, beautiful watercolor effect. The other thing I like about them is they are portable. You know, you can stick a few in like a pencil case with a water brush maybe, and you're good to go. You know, you're there with your pad of paper, you could go outside on plein air, and you could do a little bit of stuff there, and it's dead easy. You just lay down the markers, get the water brush on, boom. Uh, so I'm a big, big fan of these. I love them. It's what I started the YouTube channel um, highlighting back in the day. Um, so I'm not gonna quit with these. I'm gonna keep producing content with the watercolor markers. So next up is a brush. Surprised, aren't you? <laughs> it's the um, Artist Watercolor Brushes uh, from Winsor & Newton. And I am a massive fan of these brushes. Um, first of all, they're a sable brush. I'd never had a sable brush before and I didn't know what all the fuss was about. And because they're made with sable hair, they hold a lot more water and they hold a lot more color. And if you're a watercolorist, then you know what that can mean to your work. They've also got a nice kind of um, springiness to them, but not like a synthetic brush would have. And talking of synthetic brushes, over the years I've had quite a few and I always seem to end up with little bits of hair sort of splaying out from the actual main body of the brush. And uh, I've always found that I've had to snip bits off. I've never had to do that with a sable brush. When I'm putting that sable brush into the water and it is dry, it instantly soaks up all of that water and you get a lovely either pointed or flat shape to the brush straight away absolutely brilliant and I love using them for everything whether it's watercolor pencils um, and regular watercolors in pans or tubes but I also use them in watercolor markers and I didn't think that I would need to at first because I felt that um, I had to make the watercolor marker react more with perhaps a synthetic brush but I found over the years that they're so good now that uh, you can use a sable brush with watercolor markers and it works like a dream. And also these got a slightly different kind of barrel. The barrel shape kind of curves and undulates, meaning it's slightly thinner in the middle. And I actually find that a bit ergonomic and easier to hold when I'm actually gripping the brush and looking to paint with it. Most other brushes either taper from one end to the other. They don't tend to sort of like um, suddenly get a bit thinner in the middle. So I really like that about them. So I've done four of my top five, and before I get to the last one on the list, I thought I really ought to do some honorable mentions of some of those pieces of art kit that we all know we all love, uh, but perhaps isn't quite a favorite thing, but are almost indispensable. So here's some of those. And probably my favorite art material of the lot is my watercolor set. Um, I started out with watercolors in the late 80s and I had Winston Newton's Cotman set and I was still using these when I was teaching and my um, head of department said to me you need to get some proper good um, artist watercolors you won't believe the difference in the color so I splashed out a little bit and I got this lovely box set called the Piccadilly box set uh, by Winston Newton and inside it had obviously a mixing tray and it had a whole bunch of these colors that were different they were brighter they were more saturated with color than what I was used to using with the Cotman stuff and even have this lovely space for the brushes as well. One little caveat, one little disappointment is the fact that all of the paints that you can see there, they are um, sat in a little plastic kind of shrink molded frame. I was kind of hoping that they would be in something a little bit more classy than that. You know, you got the wooden box, but uh, you know, it's a minor grumble. Now I use these lots. Um, when I first got them, I was painting about A3 size watercolors and I used them loads for that. So I use a lot of earthy tones, muted tones, but also lots of greens and blues as well. Uh, and I, yeah, they were brighter. I could tell straight away the difference between using these and using Cartman. And I love using pans. I know some people love tubes, but I'm a bit economical and I hate wasting stuff. So the pans work brilliantly for me. I've never got anything left in a palette afterwards because I'm just using the pans. It tends to mean that perhaps I don't use as much paint as maybe I should. And also maybe it means that I don't paint as big as maybe I could because I'm using pans rather than tubes. But I love the pans. You're never going to stop me from loving the, the pans. And watercolor is just brilliant. All those lovely watery see-through colors that you can layer on top of each other, drop in clean water, do blooms, dry brushing, all of those lovely effects that just enriches the whole of watercolor to me. I love this set. Uh, and every time I run out of a color, you know, I'm always replacing it straight away. I don't think of doing anything else. So this is probably my, my number one, my go-to 
art material that I am most pleased with and most proud of. Having watched the video back, I've now decided that it looks a bit like it's some kind of Windsor Newton advert. Uh, that was not my intention at all, and I can tell you that this isn't a sponsored video. I think they just got their brand hooks into me when I was like back in the 80s, and uh, I've just stuck with them ever since. Now you might also be surprised to see that the Faber-Castell watercolour pencils only made the honourable mentions list. Well, I've only been using them for a couple of months now, so I think over the course of the next year, if I use them a bit more, then they could well be on this list and they could be pushing one of these other items off the list. But if I do push them off, which item makes way? Which one do I get rid of? So have you got any favorite art items of your own that you want to share? And if you do, then please write about them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.